Well, hey, good morning. It's Sunday morning here in Albuquerque, and it's a nice, bright, cool day out there. And uh, yesterday evening, I came home from work, and this was on the floor. No, not the Olympia SM3 case. That's just sitting there because my wife was using the Olympia, her Olympia SM3, her Olympia SM3. This was on the floor, this big box. And she was thinking I ordered something. I didn't order something. This is from somebody in Connecticut who I don't recognize the name. And it was shipped to Albuquerque. It's not super heavy, so it's like, it could be a typewriter, but it, if it is, it's a really small one, a small ultra portable. But it has stickers all over the box saying glass handle with care. And I'm thinking, well, that could be like someone's ploy to make sure the shipping company doesn't damage it, but it was shipped by airmail. And uh, okay, I'm gonna take it into the office and see about opening it up. What's in the box? The magic mystery box. Woohoo! Hmm. The first cup of coffee is always the best. Well, okay, since you guys last saw my uh, behind the fourth wall video, I have rebuilt my entire table. It's a custom built wooden table, but that's not what this video is about. The cage that went on top of the older, smaller table is on top of the new one. And as you can see, I'm going to have to build a new cage because it's shorter, it's too short. So anyways, that's temporary right now. And oh yeah, my curtain is not pulled drawn, so the closet is visible. But anyways, this box barely sits on the table. We're going to try to unbox it here together, shall we? Well, here we are. We can barely fit this box on the table. <laughs> this is funny. The Openel non-tactical slow knife. Okay, let's see if we can slice this open without slicing ourselves open. Looks like really heavy duty black duct tape that's almost the quality of gaffer's tape maybe. We have something wrapped extremely well in bubble wrap and there is an envelope here. The envelope, please, the envelope is in a protective sleeve from Chris England. He's from Kingston, Rhode Island. So in close, please find this token of my appreciation. I will not give the surprise away, but I, I would tell you that after many months of searching, I found just what I was looking for. This wonderful, and as you, you will see, somewhat quirky thing, was made in Germany, originally sold in Hungary, and shipped to me in Rhode Island, and has now landed in its new, and I hope, permanent home with you in New Mexico. I hope you enjoy it. P.S. Please feel free to share this letter if you desire, and if it's not too great, presumptuous of me, may I suggest an unboxing video? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, well, this is interesting. Now he has my interest peaked. When uh, my wife and I last night were talking about this package, and she said, are you going to open it? And I said, I'm going to wait till tomorrow so I can do a video about it. And she said, do you know, you're getting to the point now where you have your own fan club. And I said, yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? having your own fan club. And while I'm taking a lot of time unpacking this, I gotta tell you a story that my grandfather, Otto Van Cleef, who homesteaded the ranch on the East Mesa of Albuquerque in World War I, he, uh, he was notorious for opening Christmas presents very pedantically, very slow, and he made sure he used his pen knife and he made sure that every single piece of tape was carefully cut to save the paper. Because back in the Great Depression, of course, when he was a family man with kids, um, money was hard to come by and wrapping paper was often reused. So I'm not saying that I'm trying to emulate him today, but. This is actually one of the first real good uses that I've gotten out of my little French made Opinel knife. What do you guys think? <laughs> okay, now we're down to where it's starting to look like a real typewriter. And I must say, from the evidence so far, I'd say our friend Chris England has done a 
quite a good job of packing this thing. In case you guys are wondering how to pack a typewriter for shipment, this is how you do it. <laughs> or you can go to a Phoenix Typewriter uh, on YouTube and he has a lot of good videos about how to pack a typewriter for shipment. And it looks like Chris has done a bang up job here. Okay, now the s s unwrapping of the saran wrap. The saran unwrapping, I should say. I don't know what, it says it's German made, so this is interesting. Chris says it's a German typewriter. And we take the cover off. Yes, well packaged, I would say. Let's see here. Oh my goodness. It's a quartz keyboard, a German keyboard. Oh my goodness, it is a Triumph. Now I don't know the Triumph line at all very well. These these decals says Norm N O R M six Norm six. Wow, very cool. Let's look at this thing a little closer. Well, it's many hours later. It's the evening time on Sunday evening, and I've spent most of the day out in the garage working on this typewriter. It uh, the carriage was really seized up, as were the type bars, and I had to use some lacquer thinner. Actually, I had to go to the hardware store to buy some more lacquer thinner and some brushes, and I went to the uh, actually the beauty supply store to buy a stiff, flat brush that's originally intended for hair coloring. So it's kind of resistant to chemicals and uh, that worked really well in the segment to get that lacquer thinner in there. So a lot of cleaning and degreasing uh, on this machine. Uh, took apart some of the carriage uh, like the rail for the margins and uh, the back paper table and took apart some of the mechanism in the uh, in the line advance here. The platen for instance it is grooved and you know, pitted a little bit from all the decades of use, but uh, it's actually surprisingly soft. The pressure rollers are pretty good up here on the uh, bale. Down below, the pressure rollers, the one on the left side, doesn't quite grip the paper good enough, and so when you feed the paper, it kind of goes a little crooked, but it's not too bad. I am using a, uh, a used nylon ribbon that I had to spool onto these original metal spools. The shafts for the ribbon spools are a little bit larger in diameter than the universal plastic spool hole that we have available. So I just threaded, uh, spooled the old ribbon onto the, the existing metal spools. And the way this uh, whole top is, is it's Bakelite plastic and it's basically fixed and you essentially pull the ribbon spool off like that and to replace it. So. Uh, there's evidence that someone had at one time tried to remove this Bakelite cover and snapped two of the corners down here. When you pull off the ribbon covers, there's two screws down below you take off. Then you have to take off these two and this whole top comes off, but they didn't see it and they pulled it forward and those two corners are broken. But it's they're sort of behind the back row of keys, so you don't really notice it too badly. Well, let's thread a sheet in here, shall we? And some typing. I think some getting used to typing with the uh, Quartz keyboard. The <laughs> Z's and the Y's get reversed, but it's a nice machine. Types really good. Has a nice little cute bell. Beautiful machine. Types really great. Has a great feel to it. The character alignment is not ideally perfect. I had to re-solder the letter E type slug. The actual solder joint on the end of the type R was cracked. And so I got it, I think, at a pretty, cool, pretty close position. But some of the special accented O's and A's and E characters uh, don't quite line up with the other letters on the keyboard. So they're not ideal, but it's pretty close. And it is a pica typeface, 10 characters per inch. One of the things I haven't done yet, oddly enough, is I haven't actually cleaned the type slugs yet. It types pretty good, but they're still pretty dirty. I need to go back and work on that some more, maybe tomorrow. But I did put some wax on the body after I 
finish most of the really heavy uh, degreasing work on this machine and uh, pretty impressive design and build quality I think and uh, as far as the age of this machine I looked at the serial number database and the furthest back it goes with this flat style of body is the early 1950s like maybe 1954 if I'm not mistaken but this serial number is a lot earlier and if you go by the serial numbers of the previous model that had more of a Corona 4 style top it, this would have been made in 1944 so I'm not sure if it really is 1944 I suspect it's probably late 40s early 50s and maybe the typewriter database that we have doesn't go back that far but it's certainly an early version of the Norm 6 Triumph uh, model so Hungarian keyboard in quartz wonderful typewriter and I haven't done anything yet to the uh, case the base of it still here and the uh, lid I haven't cleaned any of that or anything like that but uh, I was typing on this this evening and a really wonderful machine so what a great gift this was and uh, I am very appreciative of it and so I must extend once again my sincere gratitude to Chris England for the gift of this typewriter and it was a great opportunity to do an unboxing and by the way Chris you packed it wonderfully this was a textbook case of how to pack a typewriter and also labeling the outside of the box with fragile glass stickers all over it was a really great idea too and of course the opportunity to film some of the cleaning and degreasing of it was a good opportunity as well but this is a this is one of those keepers this typewriter is I think so well hope you guys had some inspiration from this video and I really appreciate uh, again Chris's uh, love of typewriters and his enjoyment of this channel and I appreciate all of you guys out there drop me a note whatever you want to say down below and until next time you guys have yourselves a great day bye bye